Hey friends, I thought I would talk a little bit about spiders again. I've, I've been neglecting you and not informing you about the state of things in the spider lab lately. Um, and there's actually a good reason for that. Things have gotten into a very slow pace right now because uh, you may have remember I'm trying to raise Parasteatota tepidariorium, also known as the false black widow spider. And I, had some success. I've got a few spiders growing in the lab. Uh, they seem to seem to be thriving just fine, except for one one little problem, and that is that the females have eaten all the males. I guess they're like rabid feminists or something. Anyway, so right now I've got this colony that is all female, and they're not producing eggs for me. That's what I got in this business for, is I wanted lots and lots of eggs. Uh, so I guess in the future I'll have to make sure to stock up on lots and lots of males and just pass them along gradually to the females and maybe rescue them after they've mated successfully. And yeah, I'm, I'm learning. I'll get better at this business. So the spiders aren't doing much of anything except eating. Sitting there eating and getting fat and... Waiting for a mating partner, I guess. Uh, I can't find any males of Parasteatota right now because it's winter in Minnesota. There are howling winds. There are blizzards. It's really cold. We've been down around minus 20 degrees centigrade. Uh, this is not happy time for spiders. So we've got kind of a shortage of spiders right now. Not many Parasteatota around, and I'm... I'm really curious to figure out what happens to them, whether they migrate into the house and find nice secluded places where they can overwinter, whether they die, whether the eggs just persist. I don't know. I'll have to do some experiments next year to figure this out. Okay, so uh, Parasteatoda are just eh right now. Just We're in a holding pattern. Uh, so what I got here is, okay, I'll show you what Parasteatota looks like again in case you forgot. So let me run the beautiful clip. All right, so there's our Parasteatota. Uh, this is a still image first, and you can sort of sort out where the spider is. Just legs bundled up everywhere and all over the place and mouth parts and all that kind of cool stuff. You might see some eyes glinting back there. Um, and she's sitting on top of or beneath this great big beige thing uh this is from several weeks ago this is sort of the last gasp of egg production from the colony and so she has laid this gigantic egg sack they spin it from their silk and then they put eggs inside of it uh and it's just sitting there and i will pan over this thing so you can see it it's just this big football shaped structure that was full of eggs. Unfortunately, as I mentioned, she made these eggs without the assistance of any males, uh, which means that nothing developed from this. It's like she just had to get rid of all these eggs, but she had no sperm, so... Oh, well. Yeah, so that, that kind of went nowhere. But she is quite lovely, isn't she? Okay. So that's that's the one I'm I'm trying to work with that I'd be happy to work with. And we're waiting for the spring when I will go out and catch some males and get the colony going again, I hope. All right. Meanwhile, what's going on? Well, it's really easy to find spiders inside your house right now. Or in this case, inside the lot the lab. So, you know, I I've been periodically prowling around and looking for new spiders, uh, not finding any Parasteatota. But yes, I did find lots and lots of spiders of the family Fulcidae. You can too. Uh, the Fulcids are a really common spider. They're sometimes called cellar spiders. They're sometimes called daddy long legs. Um, they also are sometimes called even skull spiders because of the pattern of the pigment on their abdomen. And what they are is small spiders with long, long bodies and even longer legs 
on this photo you can see oh, there's just kind of legs hanging out everywhere out of focus it's just the body is suspended beneath these really really long legs and generally what they do is they just sort of sit there in their cobwebs wait for something to come along and then they move abruptly and kill and eat whatever they find uh, they also have a reputation for being sp spider killers so they'll eat other spiders that uh, stumble into their webs uh, that may be one of the reasons I'm not finding very many Parasteatoda right now is maybe they move inwards and then they discover that the place has been colonized with lots of falsehoods who gobble them down. Anyway, this is one I caught in my lab. He was just sitting there beneath my microscope bench. And so I scooped him up and put him in a vial. I didn't keep him for very long though because... Uh, you will notice something unusual about this. Look at the front end towards the right of the screen. And you see those two gigantic things, those translucent things. It looks like a like a pair of condoms, inflated condoms, stuck out in front of its face. Uh, those are its palps. And comparing them to condoms isn't a bad idea. Uh, those are probably full of semen. Yeah, the way spiders mate is they... Uh, the males basically ejaculate into their own face, into their palps, and they have little pouches in there that hold the semen. And then when they find a female, they will dart forward, uh, maybe court her, uh, but otherwise just go right for the belly and stick those massive mouth parts in there and uh, squirt out their semen. So this is a really, really horny spider, I think. So I felt sorry for him. He was the only one. I had him in this vial. He wasn't going to get satisfaction there. So I turned him loose in the lab again. And for all I know, he's got a bunch of progeny skittering about somewhere in the dark recesses in the corners of my lab, which would be just great. That'd be fine with me. Okay, so falsehoods. Cellar spiders, really common. Uh, you've probably got a bunch of them in your house right now. Next up, there's another kind of spider I find lots of at this time of year. Uh, not outside, they're all inside where sensible spiders are when, the, when it's minus 20 degrees centigrade out. Uh, these are the Salticid spiders. The family Salticidae are better known as the jumping spiders, and you've probably seen them around. These are little guys and they are just adorable so look at this guy um uh, actually her so that's a that's a female salticid uh i find lots of them this time of year look around your windows for instance and they're often lurking in the corners there and they just kind of run around looking for things to eat uh every house i'm sure has lots of insects yeah maybe you're really tidy i don't know this salticid spider I found, uh, I quickly scooped her up, put her in a vial, and threw her on the microscope, and this is where the problem comes in. The falsids are so calm and quiet, and they just sort of sit there. Salticids, no. They go running everywhere. So they're a lot like kittens in that sense. They're just not going to hold still. They're just going to, they're occasionally going to pause and look, look at you very cutely. And adorably and then they'll go jetting off somewhere else uh, so it was really hard to keep it in the field of view I, I think what I need to do is figure out a way to raise these salticid spiders until they're about 10 pounds in size you know the size of a cat so that you can just kind of hold them and pet them and stroke them and uh, I'm, I'm sure they would appreciate it they seem so friendly okay so let's take a look at this awkward video because I'm going to be chasing this thing around a lot trying to keep it in focus. All right, you see those palps just wiggling away. Isn't that cute? And there she is. She goes right out of focus. Oh, face on view. Look at those eyes. She's looking at us. And then she doesn't like being on camera, so she scurries away out of the field of view. And I struggle vainly to get her in focus and get her centered. There she is. We're looking at her ventral side right there. She's just probing the environment with her palps. Looking around. They're very visual animals. 
I should mention I did just feed her before this so she had a nice fly for for dinner Ah, oh, there she goes out of focus again all right so she's in a vial that was really awkward so what I did is I transferred her to a petri dish to see if I could keep her more in the field of view it was a little better but not much and there she is all those eyes looking around at us and strolling off once again sit still lady okay one thing you'll notice here we're looking at her from the back end and even from 180 degrees behind her you can still see those lateral eyes two dark spots there she's got a 360 degree field of vision so her primary eyes are up front and focused on prey in front of her uh, but you're not going to be able to sneak up behind her because she's got eyes in the back of her head or the side of her head and she's keeping an eye on you. There you can see those great big primary eyes. Oh, jump. Okay. There she is, dorsal view now. Oh, there she goes. Oh, jumping around. You know, if she were a cat, you'd think she was chasing a ball of string, but she provides her own string. You can also see that that anchor webbing that's dangling that back behind her in occasional views. So she's constantly stringing out a little bit of web there. And I'm totally lost. Where is she? There, there she was. Oh, uh, these spiders cannot hold still for you. Looking around again. And I'm a klutz trying to focus. Okay, we're looking down on her again. In a moment, I'm going to give up and say, well, this is too hard. I'm going to go to a lower power and see if I can visualize her a little better. But yeah, there she goes. These are really fun to watch. I'm probably going to get a couple more of them and raise them in the lab, see how they do. Oh, there, I changed the focus. It's not going to help. Don't worry, it won't help. So we're looking at a lower power view, trying to keep her in focus. And no, she's not going to, she's just, she's gone. But still, it's worth it. They're pretty. Okay, so those are my current crop of spiders. Uh... You can raise them too. They're really easy. The salticity are incredibly easy. You can just keep them in a vial. Uh, throw in a spider, you know, a couple times a week. Or no, don't throw in a spider. Throw in a fly a couple times a week, and uh, they look pretty good. Uh, I also use a little atomizer and spritz a little water vapor into their container because they do like a little bit of humidity. But but they are so easy to raise. So. That's where I'm at right now. Just kind of making time, playing with spiders. Got to get the colony going seriously in the spring. Uh, I'll post an update then. Once they start laying again, you'll hear from me. And we'll look at some more baby spiders. Okay, I hope that was fun. Talk to you later.